righteous peace even when my enemies dare to fight. You anoint me with fragrance of your Holy Spirit, and you give me all I can drink of you until my cup overflows. So why would I fear the future? Only the goodness and tender love of God pursues me all the days of my life.
Yes, it is. Come on, people. Testify. Why should I fear? The evidence is clear. So clear.
Sunday message, getting your latte on the way out and driving off to Denny's. No, those days are done. Those days are done. We are showing up to grow up. Amen. God is raising up his fivefold ministers, apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers who are realizing, wow, I have an assignment on my life that wasn't what I thought I had in Bible college. That wasn't what they told me in my seminary school. That wasn't what my denomination said over me when they gave me a certificate or ordination or they made me a licensed minister. This is something I've never seen before. This is the greatest move of God since the cross. Yes. That's what Apostle Larry has said. That's what we believe. That's what we're seeing now. And so soldiers come to get equipped. Amen. Soldiers are there to fight battles and win. Amen. God did not raise up an army to lose. God did not raise up an army to retreat. God did not raise up an army to surrender and hold up a white flag. No, those days are done. God is now in the midst of raising up the army of his children. Those who will reign in life through Jesus Christ. That is Romans 5.17. Those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life with Jesus Christ. Which means those who don't won't. That's right. Those who don't won't. But God is now raising up ministers who will preach the truth that will cut through all the clouds that you had in your head, all the unanswered questions, all the wondering, well, why do I read this in the scripture, but I don't see this in my church? Mm. So now, now is the time. Mm. Now is the time for the new wine to be poured out into new wine vessels. Okay. Who can expand? Amen. Who are not at their limit ready to pop because they're old cracked wine vessels? No. Who are saying, God, make me a vessel. Make me a vessel. Make me a vessel of new wine so I can expand on the inside. I lay down my old flames to carry your new fire within God. If you want new fire, you're going to be part of this end time revival army. If you stay in the equipping and in the training, you are reigning. Hallelujah. Over all the power of the enemy over all the damage that's been done to your family, everything that's happened to your own personal life, all the car wrecks behind you, okay? God says, no, we're not repeating that because I'm raising you up to be just like me. Amen? So in this revival time right now, the Lord wants to encourage you this morning with this word. Don't lose your momentum. Don't slow down. Don't back off. Press in even greater and even stronger. Amen? Amen. Look what Paul wrote to his son Timothy. 1 Timothy 4, 14 and 15. Timothy, don't minimize the powerful gift that operates in your life. For it was imparted to you by the laying on of hands of the elders and it was activated through the prophecy they spoke over you. Make all of this your constant meditation and make it real with your life mm. so that everyone can see that you are moving forward. Amen. Give careful attention to your spiritual life and every cherished truth you teach for living what you preach Mark. will release salvation inside you and to all those who listen to you. If I am not moving forward, if I am not gaining momentum, if I'm not living what I preach, if I am not continually aware of what God's got for my life and my spiritual life, how can I help make you aware of what God has for your spiritual life? How can I, if I'm not experiencing salvation growing inside of me, the height, the depth, the width, the breadth, and what it means. I'm not talking walking an aisle and praying a sinner's prayer. I'm talking about all that salvation is. Jesus Christ is salvation. That's what Yeshua means. That's what Joshua means. Salvation. If we, if we continue to allow that salvation and the revelation of it to expand every day in our life, then we can pour it out. Then we won't lose momentum. 
You see, Paul wrote this in his letters to Timothy because it was not going to be that much longer that Paul would say, I'm done here. I've passed you the baton. I've taught you everything I could possibly teach you. I've demonstrated to you how to walk in the spirit, how to overcome the enemy, how to make full proof of your ministry. Because I've made full proof of mine. I have fought the good fight of faith. I have finished my race. And I have overcome every enemy that has come against me. Now, it doesn't mean he overcame it just like that. Some enemies that are going to come against you, you're going to fight a little bit a little bit harder. You're going to fight a little bit stronger. You're going to learn a new way and a new skill and a new plan that God gives you. You're not going to do everything like a robot because God wants you to be like the person on the obstacle course. He wants you to be like the person on the track and field event who can do the decathlon. That means you are a champion in 10 different events. God wants you to be able to be nimble, quick, on your toes, on your feet, ready at any given time, day or night, day or night, so that he could call on you at 2 a.m. at 2 p.m. He can call on you in the middle of your dinner and you'll put down the fork and do exactly what he tells you to do. He can call on you when you feel like taking a day off. But Lord, I don't want to do spiritual warfare today. I want to lay around the pool. He goes, you're going to do spiritual warfare even when you're laying around the pool. Amen. You're going to do, you got to be ready, child. you got to be ready in season and out of season. When you feel like it and when you don't. You, got, you can't lay in bed when I say get up and show up. Yeah. When the bugle blows in the morning. Every soldier, male, female, get up out of that bed, get dressed, make the bed, and show up and line up. The party for duty, sir. I'm here. You can count on me, Jesus. You can count on me, not by my own strength, not by my own goodness, not by my own good works, but by the power of God that constantly energizes me. In the exceeding abundant above all you can ask or think power that dwells in me, according to Ephesians 3.20. Amen. So Paul was giving this beautiful word to Timothy that he should make all of this his constant meditation and make it real with his life. Not just his lips, his life. His life. That means Timothy had to keep letting go of old stuff and embracing new. Letting go of old and embracing new. Living humble, living surrendered. Not living weak and powerless and giving up and going sitting in his room and crying because the church was having a little bit of a problem. Because the church he was pastoring was having a problem. Let me tell you, he was over Ephesus and there were some issues in that city. Because before they came in there, the city was completely given over to the principality. Give it over to the demons. You have to understand this. This is, this is the, first, the first line that came in. So there was a lot of ground to be broken. You couldn't be weak. You couldn't be mealy-mouthed. You couldn't be shy. That's why Timothy, God told Timothy, God did not give you a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Let no one despise your youth. Speak what I told you to speak no matter what your age is, no matter what they say against you, no matter how many demons come against you. Timothy, you are in a hotbed right now. And you're bringing in the fire of God. You're bringing in the anointing, Timothy, that was given to you by the laying on of hands. It's the gift. Stir it up. God in you is bigger than any demon in the city. Hallelujah. Because you're greater than 10,000 armies. Amen. Now, look what God says in Revelation chapter 3. This is to all the churches. Not just to this particular church. But this is to all the churches. Revelation 3, 10 through 12. Jesus said, Because you passionately kept my message of perseverance, <laughs> I will also keep you from the hour of proving that is coming to test every person on earth. Oh, wow. Hallelujah. But I come swiftly, so cling tightly to what you have, so that no one may seize your crown of victory. Wow. For the one who is victorious... I will make you to be a pillar in the sanctuary of my God. Permanently secure. 
I will write on you the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, descending from my God out of heaven, and I'll write my name on you. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! But it's key. What's the key? Those who have passionately kept my message of perseverance. An army that quits in the middle of the battle is a losing army. They, they, they quickly become either casualties, they die on the battlefield, or they become prisoners of war. And there's so many Christians who are in POW camps. If you don't know what that means, we knew what that meant in the 60s and 70s. Because people were prisoners of war, especially during the Vietnam War, which is the one that I grew up through. People were captured and put in POW camps, which means prisoner of war. Or they were MIA, missing in action, and we couldn't find them. This is where the church has been, by and large, for almost 2,000 years. Prisoners of war. Because they didn't have generals, they didn't have apostles, they didn't have prophets, they didn't have consistent anointing, perseverance. They didn't have the revelation and the power that was supposed to be given to them by their apostles and prophets and impartation and able to follow a general who wins battles and doesn't run off the battlefield and say, everybody, every man for himself and run away. Christians are not supposed to be prisoners of war. No. Right? No. no. It says Jesus triumphed openly when he made the devil his captive. He paraded him around. It says he was not their prisoner. When Jesus died and went down into the death, down into the, the depths, it says he took captivity captive. Amen. He made the devil bow before him. They, the demons and the devils, they were his prisoners of war. Amen. And that's what we are supposed to do. Amen. We're not sideliners holding up signs going, go Jesus, go Jesus. He goes, get dressed up. I got a uniform for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't lose your momentum. And then what he says, the one who is, the, oh, I come swiftly. I come swiftly. Cling tightly to what you have so no one may seize your crown of victory. Why would he say that? Because it's possible. Wow. It's possible to start and not finish. Ooh. Many have. Yes. Many have started this revival even. In three years that I've been in this end time revival, a believer for 45. But many have started this end time revival. And when the training got too hard, fire got too hot the commitment got too much the surrender that was required that people all around you were, were, were submitting to you said I'm going to have to tap out tap out I can't last I'm getting winded I'm getting tired and the devil will make sure there's plenty of little spots for you to rest along the side of the road that you'll never recover from You'll sit there and he'll say, hey, some Kool-Aid. Just drink that Kool-Aid. Drink this Kool-Aid. Sit down and rest with me a while. Let me talk to you a little bit. And as soon as you give him your ear, you know what he's going to say? Isn't this exhausting? No. This is exhausting. Aren't you tired? No. That's the first thing they start saying to people when they want them to die. When they're planning the euthanasia for them, when they're planning their death. I know, because in 2003, when my mother moved to heaven, this is what the nurses and some family members began to say to my mom. Oh, she's tired. Aren't you tired? Aren't you tired? They had, a, they had a trach in my mom. She was breathing through a trach in her neck. My mom wasn't ready to go home. The nurse told me, your mom's tired. Just let her go. I walked in the hallway. I said, you ever say that to me? My husband was standing next to me. Rebels Community Hospital. You ever say that in front of my mom again? I tell you, I'm going to bring a lawsuit against this hospital. My mom is not tired. My mom is strong. You don't know my mom. My mom is 67 years old. My mom is strong. Three months ago, my mom could walk four miles. My mom could still flex down my bicep bigger than my brothers. I'm telling you, my mom is not tired. Don't you speak that over her. Amen. Amen. And the nurse got quite indignant and walked away. I said, don't forget me. All right. She's not dying. And I went into mommy. I said, mom, you, you're strong, aren't you? You don't want to go home to be with Jesus yet. She shook her head. I said, you're staying, mama. You're staying. You don't go. You don't go until you want to go. It's time. I'm speaking life over you every single day.
single day. I even had to kick family members out. Yeah. Good thing God gave me the boldness of a lion. Hallelujah. I'm the youngest, the baby, the only girl, but I don't have any problem stepping up when Jesus says step up. Because you can't fear anybody. You fear God, you don't fear anybody else. You just do the will of God. Amen. But you can't back down because it looked really bad. It looked, it looked, oh my gosh, just let her go. Put her out of her misery. That, I, I could just see this evil, like kind of a doctor in the hallway wanting to give her this shot and euthanize her. No. 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 We're not, we're not calling it quits. And Christian Army, you got to realize I got a whole new way of thinking. I'm not a civilian anymore. I'm not a civilian anymore. I'm not a civilian. I don't wake up and choose what I'm going to wear every day. I put on the armor of God every single day. I wear it. I wear it to bed. I wear it when I wake up. I'm not a civilian anymore because people are counting on me to live. People are counting on me to make it. People behind me, people around me, brothers and sisters in this body, those who are not saved yet are counting on me to be at the right place at the right time to show them by my life what it's like to be a free person, what it's like to be more than a conqueror in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Don't let anybody take your crown. Amen. Hallelujah. So God is causing us to progress at a faster pace in this end time revival. God is speeding us up and we are gaining momentum as we mature and grow and increase in the anointing. <laughs> He's moving us forward into maturity and ability to carry the authority and power of his kingdom. We must partner with him in this new level of intensity of love, love, purity of heart, and true transformation from the old wine into the new wine. This must become our one thing. Yes, Lord. It must become our aim as it was the Apostle Paul's. Mm. Wow. Beautiful. Wow. Ooh. That's good. Please don't tell me you're too old to be in the end time revival. Uh -uh. No. Please don't tell me you're too young to be in the end time revival. Yeah, no. Please don't tell me you're too tired of fighting the devil. No. If you're too tired of fighting the devil, you know what happened? You quit. You're a prisoner of war. Oh. You're in his cage. Uh-oh. Caged birds don't fly, no, and they rarely sing. Mm. You are made to finish this race, mm -hmm. this marathon. Jesus. You are made. You're made out of God's stuff. You're made out of God's DNA. You're made out of the DNA of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, yes. who've yes. never lost a battle and never will. That's what you're made out of. Every morning, wake up and declare that no matter what you feel like. Yes. See, armed soldiers don't, they don't, they don't say, well, I don't feel like doing this today. No, soldiers don't go by their feelings. No, no. Soldiers don't go by their circumstances. Soldiers go by the commands from the commander in chief. Who is supplying them intel. Intel. See, when you show up and you listen to the commander, and you listen to the apostle and the prophet, you listen to the Holy yeah. Spirit, you're getting intel that the people snoozing in bed aren't getting. Because you're hearing revelation. You're hearing prophetic words. Prophetic preaching is going forth and breaking off strongholds and waking you up out of that long slumber. Waking you up, growing you up and maturing. You see, don't you understand, have you ever played sports? It's called an elimination round. Right. Elimination <laughs> tournament, right? You start, everybody starts level. Everybody comes in level. There may be 20 teams, right? And team A plays, plays team B, and team C plays team D, right? right yeah. Whoever wins between A and B and C and D, then they play the next level up. And they keep going, and they keep going. Don't think that, that, that you're gonna keep fighting the same little demons that you fought when you first came into the end time revival. No. Well, I got demons cast out of me. Isn't everything now supposed to be great? The Lord goes, I cast the demons out so I could fill you with my spirit yes. and my anointing so you could be all you're supposed to be. Yes. Not just to get that little thing off of your back or that thing out of your head. I'm filling you with my power, my anointing, to be something you never even knew you were going to be. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But it must become our one thing. Love, love. First of all, love of God Amen. is the fear of God, is the worship of God above all else. Yes. Then loving the body. Loving the body. No schism, no division. No offense, no cancer in the body. 
Amen. We must all speak the same language of the Holy Spirit. We must speak the language of love and truth. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Now look at Philippians 3. This is what Paul wrote to the Philippian church. 3, 10 through 12, Passion Translation. He says, I continually long to know the wonders of Jesus. He thought, well, don't you already know them? Oh, no, there's more. Hallelujah. And then to experience the overflowing power of his resurrection working in me. Wow. Paul says every day I need to be resurrected. Every day I need that resurrection power. Not just when I got saved and I walked the aisle. Well, Paul never even walked an aisle. And he never prayed a sinner's prayer. So how did Paul get saved? Hallelujah. It's the resurrection power that he longed to know working in him. He says, I will be one with him in his sufferings. And I will become like him in his death. Only then will I be able to experience complete oneness with him in his resurrection. Ha! From the realm of death. I admit, I haven't yet acquired the absolute fullness that I'm pursuing. But I run with passion into his abundance so that I may reach the purpose for which Christ Jesus laid hold of me to make me his own. The passion of Jesus needs to be implanted in your heart. But you have to say yes because he won't force you. Yes. He won't force you. He'll offer it. He'll offer it. He'll offer it. And then at some point in your life he may stop offering it. He might say, you know what, you told me no so many times. I'm moving on. You, you want the comfortable life? I want to give you the overcoming life. Wow. You know, you just want to slide through. You just want to make it. You just want to, you know, have your bills paid. Have a nice family, nice kids, nice dog, you know. And, and just, you know, retire and get a motor home and travel the United States. And the Lord says, do you not have a passion for what I made you for? Don't let the enemy or the world give you an identity or a dream that didn't come from God. The American dream is not necessarily God's dream for you. Paul says, I want to become one with his sufferings. Who dreams for that? But he understood in the suffering, in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, there was a joy that was set before him that caused him to endure the cross, despise the shame, and gain the victor's crown. Hallelujah! And when Paul embraced that, power came into him to go through anything and everything so that he could become victorious and experience ongoing resurrection life in his body, soul, and spirit. Amen? Hallelujah. Now he says this in Philippians 3, same, same chapter, just keep going down further, 13 through 16. Amen. And he, I love this. Paul knew. Paul knew where his strength came from. I don't depend on my own strength to accomplish this. <laughs> However, I do have one compelling focus. When Paul says he has one compelling focus, listen in real close. Because he was a marksman. He was a marksman. I forget all of the past. Jesus. As I fasten my heart to the future instead. I run straight for the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal and gaining the victory prize through the anointing of Jesus. How was he going to get it? Through the anointing of Jesus that was poured out into him. He was only going to get this by the anointing, not by good works, not by just just coming to church and sitting in a queue, but by the anointing that God himself, through Jesus, poured into Paul. So let all who are fully mature, there you go. Obviously, he's not talking to everybody. <laughs> let all who are fully mature have this same passion. And if anyone is not yet gripped by these desires... God will reveal it to them. God will show you the anointing will locate your need. And he'll show. There's those of you in the room, those of you online. Are you not gripped by these passionate desires of Jesus? You know if you are. Right. You know if it's like 50-50, 50% of me, 50% of Jesus. You're not gripped by the passion. Come on. 
You're not gripped by the passion. God will reveal it to you. But you need to humble yourself and say, I want to be gripped by the passion because this life is a vapor. Yes. Right. And one day, you will stand before God. He says, will you grip with my passion? And you'll have to say no or yes, indeed. I embrace more and more every day. But if anyone is not yet gripped by these desires, God will reveal it to them. And let us all advance together. That means moving forward, momentum. Let us all advance together to reach this victory prize. It's not just for one, the fivefold ministers, or just a couple here and there. Let us all advance together to reach this victory prize, following one path with one passion. So God didn't want division. God didn't want multiple paths with multiple multiple um, passions. Yes, the body is one. Yes, the body has different gifts, but we all go together. Half of my body's not on that side of the room, the other half over here. No, we all walk together in the passion of Jesus who carried the passion of the Father. That's why the movie was called The Passion of the Christ, which took him all the way to the cross. Yes. See, the greatest thing Jesus ever did, if you really want to, his life was amazing, his life is still amazing, but the greatest thing he ever did on the earth looked like the greatest failure. Yes. It was the day that he died for humanity and shed his blood. Amen. And the greatest thing the Father ever did was raise him from the dead. Woo! Hallelujah. And, and that must be your passion. That must be your passion. That must be your passion. Hallelujah. That's how we all work together. That's how we have one spirit, one Father, one love, one Lord. So these are some ways the enemy, not all the ways, but there are some ways, the enemy will try to slow you down or even bring you to a dead stop. So you can't get momentum. Number one, he will introduce a pathogen. You know what a pathogen is? Yes. A disease, a sickness. He will introduce a sickness, a pathogen into the body of Christ by means of a division. I don't want to go that way. I want to go the way of Pastor Heather, Apostle Larry going. I don't want to go that way. Apostle Catherine Crick's going. I don't want to go that way anymore. I want to go my way. Okay. He'll introduce a schism, a division. Well, the three of us, let's just go this way. Was there a schism in heaven? Was there one time in our, a war in heaven? Yes. I think there was a war in heaven one time, wasn't there? Yes. I think somebody led an insurrection in heaven. Yes. I think his name used to be yes. Lucifer. Yes. Now his name is Loser. Yes. Yes. Lucifer <laughs> became a loser. Yes. And all that followed him became yes. eternal losers. Yes. Yes. Come on. Wow. Wow. It's a schism. It's a division. Or an offense. I don't like the way she said that to me. I don't like that. I, that sister said that about that sister, so I'm leaving the church. Grow up. Uh, yeah. Grow up. Yeah. How many people have you talked about? <laughs> Come on now. How many people have you thought about, but you didn't say it? The Lord says thinking it is just like saying it. Okay. For a man to look upon a woman with lust in his heart is as if he's already committed adultery with her. That's what Jesus said. He brought it home. So don't point the finger and say, yeah, but she talked about me. No, you need to repent and say, you know what? I'm going to grow up. Because sometimes families have growth charts, right? And what you say at five shouldn't be the same things you say at 15. Love covers a multitude of sins. That's Amen. a scripture. Amen. Love overlooks the faults of others and raises them up to a higher place. So if you heard somebody say something, you know what you say? That's not what I choose to believe, sis. Let's speak the truth over this situation. Yes. Oh, but if you were caught gossiping too, that means you, you, you both were doing the devil's work. So somebody needs to grow up and stop and say, you know what? We're not talking like this. This is not how I speak. I don't have blessing and cursing coming out of the same mouth or the same spring. I don't, with one side of my mouth, bless God, and the other side of my mouth, curse men. That's in the book of James. I only bless God. Lord, let my words be beautiful gifts and impart grace to those who hear me. Yeah. And you're growing in this. Yeah. And you learn to get old wine out. Yeah. Some of y'all were in churches and thought all they did. They didn't preach the gospel. They preached gossip. Yeah, that's right. Tell the truth. Yeah. Wow. So let it go. Get free from it. Yeah. Renounce it. Yeah. It doesn't mean you're bad. Let it go. 
Some of you grew up in a family. You guys all got together and whispered about this cousin, whispered about this aunt. All the kids got together and said some cruddy stuff about mom or dad or whatever. Oh, remember, stop. Stop feeding on those morsels of food sacrificed to idols. Those are word curses. You can't take that stuff in you and be healthy. It's an immediate pollutant. It's a pathogen. Nobody wants a pathogen introduced into them. That means you're sick. You've got a disease and it's going to spread. It's time for the body to grow up and walk in love. Amen. Walk in wisdom. Thank you, be slow to speak, slow to anger, Amen. quick to hear, and always walk in love. Always walk in love. And don't have a double-minded heart. Don't have a double heart going on. Don't smile and hug somebody at church and at the same time you're thinking, I don't like you at all. You need to take that to Jesus because in the anointing, he'll cleanse you. He won't condemn you. He'll take it out of your heart and pretty soon you'll be like, I could love everybody like yes. Jesus loves. Yes. Wow. And yet he knew where everybody's level was. He knew everybody's level. He knew where they were. But he was always passionately bringing that sheep together. The sheep come into the one fold. The sheep come under the shepherd's wings. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Well said. So, this brings disease into the body, causing weaknesses, illnesses, and cancers. They are those who are motivated by the enemy and are not yet fully surrendered to the true will of God for their lives. They speak out of turn. They incite offenses. They speak against the Lord's leaders who are called to oversee the welfare of the sheep. If you're speaking against your leadership in here, stop. We're here to watch over your souls and to help you and to bless you and to love you. We're not perfect by any means. But our hearts are before God every day saying, make me better. Amen. Lord, cleanse me of anything that defiles. Pol cleanse me of any pollutant. I renounce anything in me that's not of God. I renounce anything of me that's not kind, that's not loving, that's not gentle, that's not peaceful, that's not faithful. I renounce any words, any words, any heart thoughts, any, 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 anything that's in me of old wine constantly. Like Paul says, I'm constantly dying so I can receive the resurrection life. That's what Apostle Larry and I are doing all the time. All the time. When you walk under a leadership that wants that okay. and will humble themselves, you're walking under someone that you can now follow in Christ. Yeah. God knows what he has to work with on the earth. Human beings. Yeah. Only human beings. Yeah. Vessels of clay that submit to the potter on the potter's wheel. God. Say, make me a vessel. Make me an offering. Make me whatever you want me to be. When you have leaders like that, you can trust what they carry on the inside. Amen. Amen. And then you will become vessels like that too. And that you will carry what's being poured out to you. Amen. Amen. So no schism, no pathogen in the body. Look at Romans 16, 17 through 18. Paul says, and now dear brothers and sisters, I'd like to give one final word of caution. Watch out for those who cause divisions and offenses among you. Oh. When they antagonize you by speaking of things that are contrary to the teachings you've received, don't be caught in their sneer. Amen. For people like this are not truly serving the Lord our Messiah, but are being driven by their own desires for a following. Oh, they want their own ministry. Oh. Utilizing their smooth words and well-rehearsed blessings, they seek to deceive the hearts of innocent ones. Not the wise, but the innocent. You can be innocent, pure before the Lord, but you're not wise yet. Wisdom comes through time, progression, maturity, and receiving more anointing and getting out the foolishness. Yes. Amen. So if you're still innocent, it means you're naive. You can be still naive. You can have a beautiful, pure heart. To the pure, all things are pure. But the Lord says, no, I want you to become wise, not suspicious, not skeptical. I want you to become wise and discerning. Hallelujah. 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 So this doesn't happen. You don't, you don't get led astray by this minister, that preacher, this, this ministry, this one, this one, this one. This one. Because I've seen them come and I've seen them go. And then I've seen people's life become shipwrecked. Yeah. That's not going to happen here at True Grace Church. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
No. Number two, I know that second way. The enemy will attempt to bog you down. Bog you down with activities, commitments, worldly interests, and distractions of life that take your focus off of the kingdom assignment that you've been given. Yeah. Got to cut some branches. I was up in the trees this last week. I got three bulberry trees in my front yard, and they are big, and we've been shaping them for years, and I want them to be big like an umbrella, but all these little branches keep growing out, and a mulberry tree is one of the fastest growing trees that you can have. So my husband last year got my present that I asked for. It's a chainsaw. It's a little girl chainsaw. It's a girly. Right? Right? You get up there and you get up the light. I'm so happy, right? So I don't have to try to do this anymore. And so I'm up there trimming branches because I know what I want this tree to look like. Like a canopy, right? And not all these weird dead branches and branches that, that I don't want. I don't want them growing down. I want them growing up. And so you have to get in there and you have to work. God's going to get in your life and he's going to start pruning. Amen. Don't keep going, ow, ow, don't take that out. But I just bought this boat. But I just bought that cabin. But I just bought this vacation home. But I just started this job that makes me work on Sundays and Wednesdays and Friday nights. Uh -oh. But, but I, got, I, got, I got this family vacation planned all summer long so I can't go to church. Uh -oh. Well, by the time summer comes, you're going to be a wreck in fall because you're going to be so spiritually depleted. That you could have a breakdown because you haven't been sowing into your life. Like how often do you eat? How often do you drink? How often do you breathe? Every day, every day, all day you breathe, all day you drink, all day you eat. This is spiritual food. It must be your focus. So now look at Mark 4, 18, 19, Amplified Bible. Jesus says the seed or the ones, the word that was sown among the thorns are others who hear the word. They hear it. But then the cares and anxieties of the world, the distractions of the age, and the pleasure and delight and false glamour and deceitfulness of riches, and the craving and passionate desire for other things creep in and choke and suffocate the word, and it becomes fruitless. Wow. That may be why you're not growing. Wow. You spend so much time focusing on the world, focusing on everything that's going on around you, Focusing on the bad, focusing on the woe, focusing on the, 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 the things that are going on in, on the news. Focusing on trying to get rich. Focusing on just trying to get more money. You're focused on things that you don't need to be focused on. And so the word that was sown in you, that's supposed to grow in you, cannot grow because it gets choked out. Because God knows you can only focus Really, on one thing. That's why he says in Matthew 6, 33, focus, seek first above all things, the kingdom of God. It's above everything else, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Amen. Then all these other things will be added to you because Woo! God will add it to you because he's a good father. Amen. He's a faithful father. He Amen. knows what you have need of. He'll give you everything at the right time that you exactly need it. Yes. You don't have to worry that God's going to be a day late or a dollar short. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. 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 So now, in my final closing, I want to say to you, this is the way. This is the way for you to keep the momentum. Run a little faster. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. You're gonna to have to. You're gonna to have to push it up a little bit more. Receive more. You're like, but I'm tired of playing that last game that we played three hours ago on the basketball court. The Lord goes, you had three hour break. Let's go. Yeah, but this is a harder team. I know. I've trained you. You got skills. I told you I talk about my grandson, don't I? Because God teaches me through his basketball. Sixteen and a half years old. So he, he, the, the coach the coach wants him to be a better shooter. So the coach at his school gave him the key to the gymnasium. Wow. 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 So guess what he's done this week? Every day after his daddy gets off of work, his daddy works a long way away from, from, from our area. It's about a two-hour drive. His daddy meets him at the school, wow. puts on his gym clothes, mm. and they use that shooting machine. Wow. So yesterday, my grandson shot 400. Wow. And my son-in-law was right there with him, cheering him on. Yay. And that happened every day this week. Wow. Wow. And then after that, they went and had a workout. They worked their upper body. 
So when you shoot 400, yeah. so I said, so tell me, what was your uh, what was your percentage? Yeah. He said, I was at 68%. Woo! Oh. Now that's not in a game. That's in practice. Yeah. Well, you know what? 68% is not shabby. No. I said, were you shooting twos and threes? He says, yes, I was. Oh. I said, there you go. Yeah. And that's how he's going to get better. By showing up, yeah. showing up, showing up, showing up. Afterwards, he didn't, go get, he didn't go get a milkshake. He went and worked out with his dad in the gym. Come on. He pumped weight afterwards, drank water afterwards, and then ate. Okay? This is how you must understand. Because you're going to be playing higher level. You're going to come against yes. higher yes. level spiritual warfare. So don't get scared. Mm. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Tell every giant, get out my way. Hallelujah. Do you know what's inside of you? Jesus. So this is what Paul the Apostle says. Stir up the gift. The gift is the impartation of the anointing. 2 Timothy 2.6. Timothy, I'm writing to encourage you to fan into a flame and rekindle the fire of the spiritual gift. God imparted to you when I laid my hands upon you. Paul didn't just go, hey, here's a little bit, a little bit for Timothy, a little bit for this one, a little bit. No, he says, Timothy, my son, come. It's time. I have to impart to you. See, this is biblical. What's this? No, this impartation. It is biblical. I'm going to impart to you a fire gift. Come on. That will burn brightly in you, but you need to be responsible to stir it up. When the devil tries to throw cold water on it, when the devil tries to come in and stop you, tell you cease and desist, you say, oh, hell no. I will not cease and desist. All hell can come against me, and I won't stop, because God is in me. God's love for people is in me. I must bring people to Jesus and I must bring Jesus to people. Yes. So he said, stir up this gift. Timothy, I release to you the impartation of this gift that I received from Jesus Christ himself. Yes. Timothy didn't take that lightly. He didn't go, okay, I'm cool. I got a little anointing. Got a little oil poured on my head. Got Apostle Paul laid hands on me. Now I'm going to go back and do my own thing. He says, oh no. Whoa. Yeah. Woo. I've been corny. I've been crowned. I have received the impartation. Now what, spiritual father? He says, follow me. I'll teach you exactly what you need to know. Amen. 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 Look at 2 Timothy 4, 3 through 5. This is Paul writing his farewell letter. Paul lived a beautiful, full life of ministry. He didn't get saved at 16. He got saved later on. But I'm telling you, he did not waste one day. Now, one day after meeting Jesus, he was on it. He owned it. Yes. Own your calling. Own your anointing. There you go. He's about ready to go. He says, 2 Timothy 4, 3 through 5. Timothy, the time is coming when they will no longer listen. They will no longer respond to the healing words of truth. Because they will become selfish and proud. These are the ones who don't surrender. These are the ones who heard in the beginning. But now, what happened? They never got delivered from selfishness and pride. You know, those are the big ones right there. But me, but God, but me, but God. The flesh and the spirit lusting against one another. They will seek out teachers. Not with fiery words. Not with anointed words. Not with words that cut between the soul and the spirit to join in the marrow and infuse power and love and a sound mind in you. But soothing words that line up with their desires. Just give me an inspirational message, Pastor. Tell me I could make it. Tell me I could make it. Saying just what they want to hear. Yeah. Wow. If you can tell your pastor what to preach, you haven't got a pastor. Right. Amen. Wow. You got a hireling. A hireling preaches for your money. That way you can call the shots. Especially if you're a big tither. Sickening. I've seen it. 
I've seen it in 45 years. I've seen it. It's called filthy lucre. It's disgusting. It makes God want to vomit. Play for pay. If you can come in and say, I want you to preach what I want you to preach. I don't want you to talk about that. I don't want you to touch on that subject. You better do what I say. And you can tell your preacher, your apostle, your prophet, or your pastor how they should run the church. You don't have an apostle, a prophet, a pastor, an evangelist, or a teacher. Yes, man. You got a phony. You got somebody who's scared. You got somebody who will run like, like the sons of Ephraim. We read that in Psalm 78 on Friday night. Oh, they were equipped, but as soon as the heat of the battle came on, they turned, tucked tail, and ran. Mm. That's what the hireling does, Jesus says in John 10. Mm. Not a real shepherd. Because a real shepherd lays down their life for the sheep every single day. Amen. Every single day and every single way. Amen. 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 Paul says they will close their ears to the truth. Wow. And they'll believe nothing but fables and myths. Church is full of fables and myths. <laughs> Church is full of fables and myths. So be alert to all these things and overcome every form of evil. Time to be alert. Time to be mature. Time to have your eyes open. No closing your eyes when you're driving on the road. No. Keep your eyes open. Yes. Scan in front of you. Look in your rear view mirror. Find out what's on the left and right. Know what's in your blind spot. Know what's around you. Check your speedometer. Check your gauges. Know what's on. You need to know what's going on all around you. Be a Christian who's aware, alert, and anointed. Because Paul was warning Timothy. These were his last words. And he says, then be alert to all these things and then you must overcome every form of evil. Evil comes in many forms. Be aware of it. Be aware. Don't be foolish. Don't be naive. Carry in your heart the passion. Carry in, not in your head, in your heart. Where the heart is, is where the treasure is. What the heart man believes. With the heart, men and women believe. Carry in your heart the passion of your calling, he said to Timothy, as a church planter, and fulfill your ministry calling. Amen. And God is saying to every single one of you, carry this passion in your heart to fulfill the calling on your life. Even though it may not, you may not be aware of what your full calling is yet. That's okay. Doesn't matter. You don't need to know the full battle plan yet. You're in the army. Show up and grow up. Amen. Still keep coming. Don't lose your momentum. Persevere through every kind of weather. What was the song that Mike just sang? The evidence. The evidence is all around. One of the lines in the song said, the, the winter storms brought the spring. Right? So you're going to have to go through some winter storms. Don't cry to people and complain. Go, oh, what am I going through? go so spring can come yes so you'll know the evidence of my goodness is all over your life it's all over your life it's all over your life the evidence of his goodness will cause you to not lose the momentum please everybody I'm going to invite you to stand now God is moving mightily in this house right now God is touching hearts in ways that, that, that only he can do because the anointing always locates your need Whatever it is you need this morning, whatever it is you need this day, if you're watching the replay, whatever it is that you need, God's anointing, God's anointing will locate your need. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you're doing in this entire revival. God's not disqualifying anybody. God's sending out the invitation, everyone who thirsts, come. Everyone who wants more of me. Everyone who wants to see me clearly and have intimacy with me. Everyone who wants deep relationship. Everyone who's willing and wants to carry the passion of my Father and me and the Holy Spirit on the inside. I will, I will impart that to you. I'll put a fireball inside of you that will grow brighter and hotter as you stir it up. I speak over everyone in here right now that the words that you have heard this morning, these prophetic words have been spoken to strengthen you, to uplift you, to encourage you, to admonish you, to fulfill the desires and the dreams that God placed on the inside of you. 
fan into flame every gift, every message, every word of God, every encounter you've had with him here in service and by yourself. Every time he's spoken to you, may every word now be brought up to you to remind you that you are accepted and loved and set apart and consecrated unto God and God alone. I declare now that the Holy Spirit will empower you to be focused on the one thing, to be focused on the work of God in the world today, in this kingdom, in this end time revival, and that you are planted where you need to be planted and that you are not at a pot, you are planted in the ground in the, in the, by the rivers of water and that you're bringing forth your fruit in its season, that your leaf is not going to wither and that whatever you put your hands to in this anointing shall prosper. I declare you to be a mighty army of God. I declare you to be carriers of the revival. I declare you to be carriers of the anointing. I declare you as holy and set apart unto the Lord. And I declare your eyes to be open from this moment forward in brighter ways than you've ever imagined. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. You can remain standing. We are going to give you an opportunity right now to sow into the work of the ministry here at True Grace Church. God is moving mightily. He's not backing up. He's not backing down. He's not decreasing. He's increasing. He's expanding. He's lengthening your stakes and strengthening your borders. He's expanding your influence. He's expanding the influence of this revival. He's expanding the, the, the people in his army, his children, to carry more. And God wants to pour out to you financial favor. Financial favor greater than Wall Street. Amen. Greater than your job or your next promotion. Amen. Greater than any earthly inheritance. Greater than any 401k or investment. Greater than any multi-level marketing business you could ever get into. God says financial favor comes to those who sow. For God is not a liar. Whatever a person sows, they shall also reap. You sow to the spirit of the spirit, you reap everlasting life. God will never be called a liar. He will bless you and prosper you according to his good pleasure to give you the kingdom. The kingdom. The kingdom. If you're sowing today, there's envelopes on your chairs. If you're sewing online, we have our truegracechurch.com website. There's a link there to give. Amen. Hallelujah. If you're bringing your tithe, you're bringing seed for sowing, or you're bringing an offering, God wants to pour out his blessing and his favor upon you now. In Jesus' name, hold up your hand, your phone, your envelope. In Jesus' name. I speak financial favor over you right now. I speak the almighty power of God and the supernatural multiplication over every seed, every offering, and the tithe that's in your hands. I declare that as you test the Lord and prove him now, you will find that he is faithful and that he is opening up the windows of heaven and pouring you out such a blessing there won't be room enough for you to receive it all. I declare miracle multiplication is in your seed, in your hand. And that this very moment, you begin reaping as we send this seed into the future and into the work of the kingdom. God's blessing upon you, your family, your finances, your health, your body, your career, your school, your business and your future businesses. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. You can bring the envelopes up now. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. 
Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. power of God is here to move in your life. Whatever you need. God is not ashamed to call you son or daughter. God is not ashamed of you. God only wants to heal you and bring peace, wholeness. God wants to open up your understanding. The eyes of your understanding to be enlightened, to know what he has for you, what he wants for you. Some of you have been prisoners of war. Some of you were taken captive by the enemy. It almost feels like you were born into captivity. You were born into a cage. You were born into to the enemy's lies. You were raised in a house that was filled with evil darkness. Religion. Religion's about as dark as it gets. To me, religion is just as dark as Satanism. Just angel of light. Keeps you, keeps you under a yoke. Puts a yoke around your neck and only lets you have a couple feet. Some of you feel like an animal that's been on its all fours. You couldn't even stand up straight. You feel like the devil's been a ta taskmaster and whipping you, making you do things. Some of you live under such a bondage of perfection that you, you can't do anything. It literally paralyzes you. It's like the devil's told you all or nothing. If you can't do it perfect, you can't do anything at all. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Because none of us are perfect. We're being perfected every single day. We're, being, we're, we're, we're growing. We're growing. Some of you need to let go. Some of you need to renounce a spirit of perfectionism. It's a sneaky devil. It's something you can be proud of if you, if you listen to it well. Oh, you can say, look what I've done. I did this. I achieved this. I do so good at work. I get all these... Bonus points from my boss. I do this well. I do that well. I'm good at so many things. But inside you're going, I hope I can maintain that. Hope I can maintain that. What if I don't? Oh, I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. There's fear. Fear is really attached to a spirit of perfectionism. Because it's it's still, it's still, you're just still performing for the devil. Because God doesn't make his children perform. He empowers them Amen. to do his beautiful will and his beautiful works. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you know that you need deliverance today, you know you need to renounce some things, I'm going to invite you to come forward now. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If anybody you know in here, if anybody in here needs healing from a sickness, I'm going to invite you to come forward now. Thank you, Jesus. Come. Thank you, Jesus. Everywhere Jesus went, he healed the sick, cast out demons. Amen. Yes, sister. I wanted to renounce um, some stuff. I didn't think I, I need to renounce to some stuff. I didn't think it was important, but I, I see it's, it is important. Because when I came to this country, I was like nine years old. And I, last time you were praying for Sister Diana, and I was going through the same thing. And then, because um, when my mom brought us over here, I didn't know there were other people besides us. <laughs> So, when I went to school, they were like, you know, they started uh, like mocking me because I couldn't speak, because I couldn't read. Mm -hmm. So I grew up with them. And um, now that I have kids, you know, I pass that on to my kids. Because um, I didn't allow people to, to do that to me no more. So I always had something to, to say back to them. You know, and now, now that I'm coming to church, my kids tell me, Mom, are you going to be going to the white people church? And I and I talk to them, you know. I tell them, you know what? It's not like that no more. You know, um, they're good people and stuff like that. But it's hard for them, you know, because we've been mocked and um, stuff like that. And so I want to renounce to that because I want my kids to come to church. You know, and um, I want to renounce to this fear that I had to because... Um, the Lord told me about to, to do something a long time ago, but I told no, Lord, I'm afraid I don't want to go. So I want to renounce to the fear that I had with, with the calling. He, he, you know, and I, I am here for whatever he wants me to do. And 
I'm planted right here and I'm gonna stay right here. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That is so proud of you. You have received so much here. Yes. You've received so much and you've let yourself receive and become transparent. In Jesus' name, I detach you from what you just renounced. I speak to every spirit that's been operating in you of what you've just renounced. Every spirit of rejection. Every spirit of anger. Every spirit of loneliness. Every spirit of fear. Every spirit that made you feel like you're an outsider. That you don't belong. And not only do you not... You know, they, every spirit that says you don't belong in this country, you don't even belong in the body of Christ. I command every one of those spirits now to leave you in Jesus' name at the count of three. One, two, three. Out now. Every spirit that attached itself to her at nine years old when she came to this country and could not speak the language. Every spirit that caused her to fight back. Every spirit that caused her to want to go hide and not want to go to school and not want to be around other people and kids. I command you to leave now in Jesus' name. I break every generational curse that's been operating in your life. I command every spirit that came in through generational curses, bloodline curses of rejection, of abandonment, of anger, of rage, of fighting, of violence, to go now in Jesus' name. All of you must leave. I break the power of every word curse that was spoken over you, mocking you, making fun of you, criticizing you. Every word that's even come out of your mouth towards your children. I declare every one of those spirits must leave now in Jesus' name. And I specifically break the power of the word curse Alien. Illegal alien. I command the spirit attached to that word curse to leave you now in Jesus' name. Go. And every other derogatory word that has been spoken over you. Out now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every spirit come out now. I declare complete and total freedom to this beautiful child of God. This beautiful woman who was set apart to the Lord. In the womb you were set apart unto God. I release God's anointing to you now to fulfill every calling that God has on your life. You are free now from all the yokes. You are free now. I release joy and peace to you. Hope and peace and joy in your mouth, in your lips, in your heart, in your conversations now. That you are a new person in Christ now. You're a vessel of new wine. You're a vessel of new wine. And all those yokes are destroyed now. Be free to be you. Be free to be you. Be free to be God's daughter. Be free to be a carrier of the anointing and be used in mighty ways in this end time revival in Jesus' name. Fire, 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 fire to you now in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Hi. 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 Will you come in to renounce something? Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm renouncing everything that I learned in Catholic school that made me feel that I had to be good in order to be accepted. Yeah, I renounce it because the Holy Spirit helps me. Yes. yes, and I struggled all my life to be good. 
to be good. I was not good enough. No matter what I did, I was not good Jesus. enough. My mom was not good enough. She was just submissive. She submitted to everybody. She did people pleasing. She did people pleasing. She cooked. She uh, 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 advocated for people. She was always humble, but she was never respected. And I just learned that from her. And I've been fighting it all my life. I don't want it. I don't want it. No, it's not your portion. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, I detach you from what you just renounced. I detach you from every spirit of religion, perfectionism, every spirit that tells you you're not worthy, that you're not good enough. Every spirit that disqualifies you from the grace and the blessings and the righteousness of God. I speak now to every spirit that's been operating in your life, in your mind, in your, in your thoughts. With regards to religion. To go now in Jesus' name at the count of three. One, two, three. Out! I break the power of every generational curse that's been operating in your life. Every, every demonic spirit that came in through years and generations of religion, of works-based relationship with God. Every spirit that has disqualified you. Every spirit, every word curse that was spoken over you to bring you into bondage, into these yokes of never being good enough. I break those generational curses now and I command every spirit attached must go out of her now. I break the power of all the prayers you were told to pray to absolve you from sin. All the prayers and all the deeds you had to do in penitence to receive God's grace and forgiveness. I break the power of all the devil's lies in your life and the spirit that came through Catholicism. Go now in Jesus' name, out of her. I break the power of all witchcraft done in your life, all witchcraft that's worked in the generations in the past, all witchcraft that's been spoken over you, released over you, imparted to you, Demons that came and latched onto you. Demons that have been occupying your mind and your soul that came through witchcraft and spells and curses. <coughs> Every spirit of witchcraft that's been attached to her life and working in her life, you must go now in the count of three. One, two, three. Out! <coughs> Every spirit causing infirmity in your life, sickness, weakness, and despair. The spirit of despair, go out now. Leave her now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah! 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 Thank you, Jesus. God is free you right now. Just stay. Just stay. God is free you right now. God loves you so much. His power. His power is cleansing you from all of these spots, all of these lies, all of these rejections that you have walked through, that you've carried in your heart about yourself. Yes. In Jesus' name, I release this anointing to you now. Be filled now. Be free now. Be free. Be filled with God's love, God's grace, yes. God's joy, and God's peace, God's full acceptance of you. Be filled with the new wine. Be filled with the Holy Spirit's love and power. You have a sound mind from this day forward. You have the thoughts of Jesus. Be filled with his fire now and his passion. You are a successful woman. Yes. You are a blessed woman. Hallelujah. You are Jesus' woman. I declare newness of life to you now. 
I declare freedom to you now in Jesus' name. I declare every lie of the enemy to be exposed and uprooted in your heart, in your life. Every dark thing, every dark spot that has caused you not to see God clearly, caused you not to receive the revelation of this anointing and revival, I command it all to leave you now in Jesus' name. I command every spirit of infirmity to leave every single person now in Jesus' name. Every weakness, every malady, every disease, every cancer, every tumor, every growth, every spot, every diagnosis against your mental health, I break its power over you now in Jesus' name. Spirits of depression, spirits of aggression, spirits, spirits of oppression holding you back holding you back like a choke chain. I declare you must leave God's people now. In Jesus' name, every spirit in operation in your life has no claim to you that you don't want them to have. Healing is your portion. Happiness and joy. Peace of God. Strength. Grace. Anointing. Power. Love. And a sound mind is your portion. I release now this anointing to you. The joy of the Lord to be your strength. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord to be your momentum. In Jesus' name, I release the Spirit of God for you to persevere. I release the Spirit of God for you to amp it up. I release the passion of God inside of you to cause you to grow big on the inside. Bigger than you ever dreamed. As big as Jesus. Filling all of you now, spirit, soul, and body, to be preserved blameless at the coming of the Lord. Be filled with his joy, his power, his truth. And may your hearts desire more like Jesus every day a little. More like Jesus. You shall be more like Jesus every day in every way. In Jesus' name, amen, everybody. We are now headed down to 5F Church in Los Angeles. Okay. Service starts at 12 p.m. The Belasco Theater, 1050 South Hill Street, Los Angeles. Get there. You will be so blessed. We love you. And we'll see you Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Okay. Bye.